Hey everybody, David Burns. How are you today? Good to be with you again. Wow, cold. Right now it's 31 degrees and I'm freezing as you can tell, but I love making videos here on my picnic table. Um, I don't know how much longer I can do that without having to sweep the snow away, but we'll see. But uh, it is good to be with you again, make another video. Please subscribe down below. Also click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I do make a new video. Um, today I'm gonna have a video showing you um, about different types of hives. And if there's any value, pros and cons, you know, which one's better than the other. We're gonna talk about that today. That'll be coming up. And then I'm gonna make, I'm making another video really soon where I'll show you how I put a winter bee kind on and then how I wrap my hives for winter and get them through the winter. Whew. Wait, hold everything. I have to interrupt you. I know I'm making my own video. I've got it almost ready to produce. And while I'm looking at YouTube, I notice we did it. We reached 50,000 on December the 31st, last day of the year. Woo, <laughs> wow. I was so excited when I saw that. I thought, I'm just gonna make a video clip and put it in here that we did it on December the 31st. We reached 50,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. I'll make an upcoming video about uh, how excited I really am and what this means to me. But right now, I just wanted to jump in here and say Happy New Year's. Thank you so much. And I appreciate all of you being great subscribers, working hard to help me reach 50,000. That's huge. And I also need to tell you, since it is, uh, you know, depending on when you're watching this, if you're watching it, hopefully right when it's released, you know that it's time, it's January the 1st, or maybe you're watching it December the 31st of uh, 2020, January the 1st, 2021 maybe. But January the 1st, we're having our package bees go on sale. Those of you that enjoy our packages and our mated queens, Please get on the ball. Don't wait too long to get those ordered. They sell out quickly. Five frame nooks are available. Uh, uh, of course, these things are to be uh, picked up here at our honeybee farm in the spring, sometime in April, May, and June. But also, one of the things I need to tell you is I've twisted Sherry's arm to leave the online classes at 50% off for one more day. January the 1st, uh, they'll be online uh, for sale for 50% off for all of our online courses. And so after that, they're going back up to full price. And so we, I want you to be able to get those at a discounted price to help you get started on your beekeeping year in 2021. Now back to regular programming. Wow, these are all cups, coffee mugs that you guys have sent me. And uh, I'm gonna save each one for a video. Uh, so today I've chosen this one because it's got a lot of paperwork on it. And when it has a lot of paperwork on it, it means it came from a far, far away place. And when I started reading it, it says Australia. So this was probably sent to me six months ago, <laughs> however long it takes to get something from Australia. So we'll take a look at it and see what this is all about. But I am excited today. Um, we're going to have a, a little section where you can uh, hear my thoughts on and opinions on different hives. And I want to, you know, I want to talk about what hive you should start with as a beginner beekeeper, especially. Um, I love this YouTube channel because it's mainly geared toward new beginners or hobbyists. I'm not trying to uh, have YouTube videos for, um, you know, commercial beekeepers or if you have a thousand hives or something. Uh, but I do like to have this YouTube channel for new beginners, people that are starting out in beekeeping. And one of the questions I'm often asked is, what hive should I start with? But a lot of people don't ask that question. They just go on the web, they go on the internet, and they start looking at um, YouTube videos or people's opinions. And a lot of people have different ideas about different hives. And so some people are kind of lured in to start with um, a hive that I don't think they should start with. Stay tuned for that and we'll talk about that. Oh, this is really taped up good. 
And let me see, I think I see the person's name on here. Yeah, it is Peter. Peter often leaves a lot of comments on my YouTube uh, videos, and I appreciate that, Peter. Um, let me talk to you about comments and me answering the comments. We have been so swamped lately making and shipping these winter be kinds out that believe it or not, I have not had time to go on there and even address comments that much. I'll try to do better. We're getting caught up a little more on winter be kind. So keep the comments coming and I will try my best to answer your questions and uh, respond to your comments. Oh, this is really sweet. Hello, David Burns. As a fellow beekeeper, I say to you, thank you for the YouTube videos on beekeeping. Haven't, no, it says have. I almost said haven't, but it says have learned a lot. Take care. Peter, Melbourne, Australia. Wow, thanks, Peter. That's kind of cool. I've been to a lot of different countries. Australia is one country I've never been to. Oh, look at this. It is a coffee mug that has Melbourne on it. Oh, wow. And I'm sure if I knew more about Melbourne, Australia, that th this would mean a lot more to me. City Circle, number 35, and it has Melbourne on it. Look at that. Beautiful. That'd be really nice. Every time I take some coffee, drink some coffee in the morning, I'll give cheers to you, uh, Peter, for that. That uh, It made it. It didn't break or anything. Good packing. Good packing job. <laughs> All right, so I got a couple more to open up uh, in my next videos. Uh, like I said, I'm going to have a video today about different, you know, hives. And then I'm going to make a video. The next one is me wrapping my hive up, putting a winter bee kind on it, one of my hives. And uh, maybe some of you are wondering how to do that. But uh, that would be fun, too. Um, and then I've got some projects on bees that I'm going to be doing in Florida. So I'm getting ready in a few uh, days to actually head down. So I'll make some videos from Florida, and that'll be fun. Um, excellent. Well, today, let me jump in, and I'm going to talk about different types of hives. Too cold to talk about it here. My family uh, is all inside working and uh, getting these winter bee kinds wrapped up, bagged up, boxed up putting shipping labels on them, getting ready to ship them out. And so I'm gonna jump in there where it's a little bit warmer. It's gonna be a little louder. A few more people running around saying stuff. Just ignore all that. And then I'll come back out here because I'm gonna have coffee time with you from Peter's Coffee Mug. Let's go. So we have the traditional Langstroth hive and then some more common hives that we have today are the Ware hive, and then we have the top bar hive, and more recently we have like Slavonian hives, we have um, the flow hive, and a lot of people ask me what hive should I start with when I'm starting out beekeeping, and I want to answer that today because that's pretty confusing. Here's the thing that people fall for. When you're thinking about getting into beekeeping, you start watching YouTube videos. And sure enough, you'll land on a YouTube where somebody has veered off uh, the most common way that people get started. And they may start uh, telling you about a specific hive, a, a certain hive that's uh, unique to them, maybe unique to their country even. And they'll tell you uh, all the great things that it does, all the great way that it has worked for them. And so you'll think, oh, I really like that person. I like that woman. I like that man. I like what they're saying about this particular hive. I like that it's not the traditional Langstroth hive. I'd like to try something kind of innovative or something kind of with a new twist to it. And you're kind of drawn to go that way. I would caution you not to do that. And let me tell you why. Because Langstroth hives have a, have a long history of uh, success. Not that the new ones don't, don't get me wrong, but when you're starting with something new, you might as well start with what has been proven 
And if you stop and think about the Langstroth tradition, it has been the main hive that has been used in all the experiments on bees, all the studies that have been done on bees. You know, 99% of all the information that we have drawn about honeybees have come from Langstroth hives being studied. And so when you veer off to another type of hive and you start applying some of the same principles to beekeeping, uh, it may not always be exactly the same or have the same outcome as those studies that were done in traditional Langstroth boxes. Plus, Langstroth hives are fully supported by an arsenal, an array of other equipment pieces. Some of your other uh, hives that are more uh, uh, not as common, they can have uh, not as many accessories. Maybe they don't have a way to put supers on it or queen excluders in the right way, or you may not have the same way opportunity to feed your bees with the, the new hive that you're buying that's a little bit different. Again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't experiment with these different hives that are kind of interesting, but I want you to get your basic beekeeping knowledge from a Langstroth hive. And here's an example I want to share. Um, the Flow Hive, I think, is a, a, a genius. It's ingenious. It's the guys that created it did a great job. You turn a little knob, the honey flows out. You don't have to do all the hard work of extracting honey. But I really think that what you should do first is run a Langstroth hive for about a year. Understand how the bees, so it's not just learning a hive, you need to learn bees. And the best way to learn bees is with a very traditional, very common, very familiar hive of the Langstroth hive. Now, I want you to pull those frames out at the end of the year. I want you to cut off the cappings of those honey super frames. I want you to spin out the honey. I want you to get familiar with how you actually extract honey traditionally, and you can see how a hive works. Now, when you get that experience under your belt, I think it's fine to go a different direction or experiment with a different type of hive. Maybe you'll say, I want to experiment with a top bar hive. I want to try the, the flow hive. And a flow hive really is pretty much like a Langstroth hive in, in, in that sense, except the way that the honey is extracted, that's where it really is different. And so you can experiment more with a Warre hive and talk more about the quilt box and all that. But starting out beekeeping with a hive that is really a lot different uh, than what most people start out with, can cause you to really miss a lot of basic fundamental understanding of bees in general. And so I would encourage you to start with that Langstroth hive first and get at least one year of solid foundation in beekeeping from that Langstroth hive. And then you can veer off onto other types of hives that might interest you. I'm not putting those down. I think those are great hives. And I think you can start with those if you so choose. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm not telling you not to start with those other hives. Um, this is just my opinion after teaching students for decades that it's better to start with a very traditional hive so that you can get a better knowledge of your bees and understanding how bees work within a colony. Now, all the noise you hear behind me, by the way, is mostly family members that work for me this time of the year. We're getting all of our winter bee kinds out. And so uh, they work pretty good back there behind me. Uh, sometimes uh, they quit, but they come back the next day. Sometimes we fire them, then we ask them to come back the next day. You can do that with family members, you know, uh, on a honeybee farm. So um, we're excited to get these uh, uh, winter bee kinds out. Uh, we have temporarily taken them offline just so that we can get caught up on the orders. And once we are caught up, uh, we will certainly put those back online for you guys to get your bees through the winter. Well, back outside for coffee time and my new coffee mug from Australia. Thank you, Peter. Uh, I was thinking when I was uh, pouring the coffee in it, uh, Melbourne. I say Melbourne, Australia, but is it Melbourne? Melbourne, Australia? I'm terrible at pronouncing things. I was raised by parents who were raised in the south, the rural part of the south. And so <laughs> I, think, I think my parents butchered words when I was growing up and I just learned to say things the way they were saying them. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, I like Melbourne, Melbourne, Australia. 
Uh, let me get a sip of coffee in me. Mmm. That's good and hot. Uh, anyway, I wanted to talk to you a minute about the winter bee kinds. Again, uh, as you saw, we were getting these ready. Um, a lot of people are asking, I want these. Why can't I buy them? They're offline. They're not available. They're sold out. When can I get one? How can I get one? Some of you are driving over and trying to get them. Um, why, well, we've, we've, um, we put these online in August to be sold. So early bird gets the worms, so to speak. And then we ship them out according to when you placed your order. So every year, if you place your order early, you get yours earlier than everybody else. But this year we had to wait until the weather uh, got a little cooler till we could ship them. So that was unfortunate. We had an unseasonably warm fall that uh, delayed us shipping these out and getting caught up. I saw there was a bunch uh, ready to go out today. Um, but we are pretty much caught up now with some still going out. But anyway, I want to tell you that we are still making these. Um, and if you want to order them, the best way you can get one is to watch our website. I think if you go on there and click on the Winter Be Kind and say add to wish list, the website should notify you when these are online. What we're doing is putting, we make a bunch each week and then um, we're trying to stay caught up. We only make what we can ship and get ready. Um, and then we put them online and these sell out within minutes. So you're going to have to watch, you know, we'll put 50 to 100 of them online within minutes they're sold out. That's how popular they are. They go on the hive like this with the candy down. You can see the insulation here to help with condensation and warmth of the hive. And the entrance and exit for winter defecating, the bees defecating in the winter, and for humidity inside the hive to be depleted. <coughs> so just beware uh, if you do want one and you're kind of late in the game in getting them, Watch that website. We're still making them. We're still producing them. We're making them available uh, as we can. So just add to wish list. And they might say sold out. Add it to the wish list. You'll know when we have some available again. So keep that in mind too. Oh, I wanted to show you one more thing. Before I show you this, do not, please, please, I beg you, do not go to my website and try to order this. This is, and the reason I'd say don't buy it from me is because we only have these available in eight frames. We sold out all of our 10 frames and we can't get any more. Um, so the, we do have some eight frames. So if you want an eight frame, uh, one of these, and if you have an eight frame hive, we do have a handful of these, but don't go crazy. Sherry always warns me before I make a video not to, to make sure that we have something in stock before I mention it. I appreciate you uh, being so such good customers. Um, but this is a, what do you think this is? Do you know? This is a mouse guard. It goes on the front of your hive. Now these come in eight frames, eight frame size, or they come in 10 frame, a little longer. And what the uh, premise is behind it, you know, you can attach it to your hive, the bottom board. It goes between the, you know, the bottom board rails. The bees can pass through the little holes here and it keeps the mice from coming in. And boy, uh, mice can destroy your colony during the winter time. So you do need some sort of a mouse guard. However, before you go crazy and buy one, I'm gonna show you in my next video, in a few days hopefully, how to wrap your hive and seal off the bottom entrance and only allow the bees to go in and out of the top of the hive through this entrance here that's on top of uh, a deep or a super on top of your hive just under the top cover and by doing that mice can't get up that high bees uh, have a lot more ability to defecate in colder temperatures when they're up that high in the hive they don't have to go down walk over their dead sisters and get outside and come back in down there beautiful idea that i came up with if i do say so myself <laughs> so keep that in mind but um if you aren't using the Winter Bee Kind and you do want to have a mouse guard on your hive, please do that. Uh, keep the mice out because they definitely will destroy your hive. I just wanted to show you something, a little gadget. Gadget time! <laughs> uh, so this is coffee time when I talk about life in general. Um, you know, today is a beautiful day. I'm actually um, recording this on a Sunday afternoon and it's about 3 o'clock, 30 degrees, very cold. Not very windy though. I like that. Uh, sometimes the winds out of the south, southwest coming right at me and it's hard to videotape, 
but today the wind's more out of the north, so the building has given me a lot of shelter. And I, I, I can sit out here and not be cold. I can wrap my hands around this warm cup of coffee. Um, but I want to talk to you today uh, about uh, life in general. And what I've been doing lately, I, I've got a lot of projects going on, actually. And it's I'm 60 years old. I'll turn 60 next month, or 61. And I've found that as I get older, I'm, I'm still motivated, but I'm not as motivated as when I was younger. So sometimes I have a lot of interests, a lot of hobbies, things that I look forward to doing during the course of a day, but then they kind of take a back seat sometimes. And I find myself saying, oh, I was going to do this and this and that, but I only got one thing done. And sometimes um, I see people that do what I'm doing and they get frustrated with themselves. Oh, I can't get all this done. I'm so frustrated. There's not enough time in the day. But I don't get frustrated. I have set my goals and agenda, my hopes and dreams for a day pretty high. And when it doesn't happen, I'm like, okay, there's tomorrow. I don't get all upset about it. I don't try to micromanage every minute of my day because then I really don't enjoy the day that much. I'm not having fun. I, I don't, uh, I feel pressured to get a lot done. And so, but I do have a lot of hobbies, a lot of interests. And these interests take a lot of my time. Let's take today, for example. Today I said, okay, I'm gonna make a YouTube video for my YouTube beekeeping channel, which I'm doing. And then I said, I'm also gonna put up a brand new tower. That's actually an antenna. I'm gonna mount it on my roof. I've already got two antennas on my roof now for ham radio. And I bought an 80 meter. I, I'm not able to get 80 meters with my current two antennas. And so I bought an 80 meter antenna. It's a Comet. And I'm looking forward to talking on 80 meters. Um, but I set out today to go ahead and put that up on my roof. And I walked outside <laughs> and I'll tell you, wow, it was 32 degrees and a little windy out of the north. And when I kind of got up on the roof, it was even windier. And I have a metal roof, windy and cold, cold metal. And I was like, nah. And I, I kind of hate that I waited until winter to advance some of my um, ham radio hobbies. I, I hate that. But uh, because I want to go ahead and, you know, get things rolling outdoors. But darn, it's just too cold to get out there and do stuff. So I may wait until the warmer day to put that 80 meter antenna up. But anyway, it was okay. I didn't feel bad about it. I don't have to talk on 80 meters. It's just that I have a few more states uh, to make contact with, to make, to make 50 states. So I've got um, Illinois, Indiana. I think I maybe have Wisconsin, maybe. Um, I still can't get, for some reason, I can't get Maine, which seems you know, easy to get because it's farther away. And I can't get, I haven't gotten Nebraska yet. So those are my five states. Once I get those, I get the 50 state award. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so 80 meters allows me, 80 meters is a band that allows you to talk kind of a little bit closer. Like you can talk on 20 meters, which is like 1400 megahertz. You can talk on 14 meters all around the world. You can talk on, um, I see you can talk on, I said 14 megahertz, that's 20 meters. And then 40 meters is seven megahertz. You can talk, well, it's hard to say. You can talk a little closer, but you can also talk around the world on that frequency. But 80 meters, about three megahertz around that area, boy, you can, you can talk short. You can talk to somebody in Missouri and in Indiana, even Illinois and Ohio. So I want that antenna up so that I can make my more local contacts. And that'd be good. So got the antenna ready to mount it up. Too cold for my comfort zone. <laughs> so what I want to talk to you today about is hobbies. And I think I've mentioned this before. And I have a great interest in talking to people about their hobbies and what hobbies they are interested in. And I want to tell you why I think hobbies are very important. Um, hobbies are important because they distract you from, from the inevitable. <laughs> what do I mean by that? Well, the inevitable is that life can be hard and life can be a struggle and life is short. 
What I mean by what is inevitable is that we're all going to die eventually, right? Um, we're not going to live that long on this earth. Um, you know, I'm, I'll be 61. Uh, my dad died when he was 74. And so, you know, it's hard to say about genetics, but I've only got maybe 10, 20 years of good living left in me. Maybe, unless things go really well. And I'll maybe live to be 105. Who knows? I know. But you hear what I'm saying. And I'll tell you this. Wow! Does, when you, when you get to be my age, those of you that are younger, time flies. Whew. Every day is like this. That's how fast a day goes. Boom! A day is gone. I'm going to do these things today. Boom, the day's gone. So I can see as you get older, you know, how you get old. It seems like you get older faster because days are just whipping by. Gosh, when I was young and I was like maybe, I don't know, eight years old. Oh, days went forever. A day would last 10 years. I, I would just be waiting for Christmas for years. You know, it'd be December the 22nd and it would take like months for a day to go by. <laughs> <laughs> now they go by so fast. I think you need hobbies to distract you from some things that are hard. The, some things that if you're not careful, your mind starts thinking ne negatively about your situation, your, your place in life. You might get bummed out. You don't have to spend a lot of money on hobbies. You don't have to buy ham radios. You know, you can enjoy other hobbies, gardening, reading, drinking coffee, um, collecting coffee mugs from friends around the world. I mean, you can have all kind of little, uh, very affordable, almost no cost at all to your hobbies. But I would encourage you that if your world seems to be closing in on you, especially with the pandemic, the way that, you know, we have to stay home more, we can't go out and socialize as much. Um, gosh, having something that you can do to distract your mind is really, really good really healthy. Um, with ham radio, and by the way, I'm going to make a transition. I'm going to keep my YouTube channel going uh, for beekeeping like this one, but I'm going to go ahead and make another YouTube channel for ham radio beginners. Um, I've done really well with beekeeping and helping beginners get started in beekeeping, and I want to do the same with ham radio. And I know some of you beekeepers don't give a flying fig about ham radio. You're probably sick of me talking about it. So, you know, I'll be making a separate channel. Uh, many of you have requested that, actually. You've written me, and that's been uh, kind of the motivating factor for me also doing ham radio videos. But they're going to be very basic, how to get started, why get started, how to take your test, and all that. So many of you email us, you call us on the phone during business hours and you uh, send us letters, you contact us and tell us how much you enjoy these beekeeping videos. And I really do appreciate that. And um, I think it's very humbling that some of you, many of you say you feel like you know me as a friend and I, I count that as a privilege. Thank you so much. A lot of you tell me your whole family sits down and watches my videos and learn and you learn about bees. And that means a lot to me, too. So keep those coming. I apologize if I can't always respond or get back with you about that. But I do read them, and it does uh, brighten my day up. So let's talk more about hobbies and distracting, distracting the inevitable. Um, you may have the perfect life. You may be um, wealthy. You may be healthy, and all is going well. And um, you may not have any hobbies. And you may think, why would I need a hobby? Everything is going great. It's good for your, for your mental development. It's good. Uh, a lot of times hobbies uh, cause you to do things that you need to be doing, but you're not, like getting outdoors, walking, or breathing some fresh air, making a YouTube video when it's 32 degrees and, and the cold air is hitting your face, kind of like energizing you. Have I ever told you that I, I apologize if I've said this before, but have I ever told you about cold showers? Yeah, a friend of mine challenged me. He said, cold showers are really good for you. They're healthy. And he challenged me to take cold showers to, for health and for um, meditating, being more aware in the present moment. Oh, my gosh. Wow. He lives in Florida. His cold water is like 90 Six degrees. <laughs> My cold water comes from a well underground in Illinois 
I took the temperature of my well water, ready? 53 degrees Fahrenheit. 53 degrees Fahrenheit. Do you know that's like 23 degrees colder than my body temperature? When I, when I turned the cold water on and I was taking a cold shower, I did it for about six days straight. Wow. All I could do was, you know, I, my, I was determined to do it for six minutes. You know how hard it is to stay in cold water at 53 degrees for six minutes? Time stopped. It was like forever. I had an Alexa in my bathroom, and so I set a six minute timer. And so she would ring when it's time to get out and get warm. <laughs> wow. I'm like, okay, it's gotta be six minutes. You know, it's gotta be six minutes. Alexa, how much time is left on timer? You have five minutes left on timer. What? I've only been in here one minute? I'm dying. But all I could think about was, I can do this. I can do this. So that cold shower, it makes you aware of the present moment. You can't think of things to worry about. You can't plan your day. <laughs> You're just sitting there going, ah! <laughs> wow. It was really cool. I enjoyed doing it. Um, I like warm showers, hot showers, a lot more than cold showers. So I kind of broke out of the habit after I knew. I, I did about six days of it, but it was really good. Gosh, it was exhilarating. So cold weather, you know, you can find fun ways um, to enjoy cold weather. If you're living in the north like me, you know, we have gray days. It's cold. Oh, by the way, when I was inside pouring my coffee, I asked Alexa what the temperature was, the high today in Melbourne, Australia, 62. Wow, very nice, 62 degrees, that's a nice day. Um, so he's, uh, Peter's a lot warmer than I am today. Um, so he's enjoying nice weather. And, uh, but if you don't like winter, find ways to enjoy winter. And it's hard to do if you live up really far north like me and it's really cold and it's miserable. Um, so anyway, Find some hobbies to distract you from things that are bothering you, things that are troubling you, things, things that just make your mind go negative. But I'm trying to tell you that if you get into a few hobbies where you can distract yourself from these inevitable things that are going on in your life, and you can think for a moment outside of that, it's kind of cool. You can do that. And so my challenge for you today is to... Pursue some hobbies, um, even hobbies that are far out there. Like, I can never do that. It's, I, I don't have the skills. I don't, I'm not, I'm too old to do that. Uh, you know, maybe not. I, um, I've often taught, I, I took um, pilot license, pilot lessons. I was going to be a private pilot for a while when I was a teenager. I think I told you that. But um, I kind of lost track of that because I met a girl who is now my wife. And... Uh, much rather spend time with her than in an airplane. But I've often thought maybe I'll become a pilot. Maybe I'll pursue being a pilot. You know, a private pilot, enjoy flying around. I'm not, I don't think that would be impossible. I thought about becoming a brain surgeon, but then I thought, I don't think I would enjoy that. Um, you know, and I had to be, at, I'd have to work hard, be at the hospital every day and be in surgery. And so I, I'm sure I could become a brain surgeon, but I'm not interested in that. So don't ever, you know, have the attitude like I do. Like, you can do anything you want to do, whether you're old or young. You can go back to college at any age if you want to. It's harder. Sure it is, but you can do it. Uh, fun stuff is oftentimes the hardest things to accomplish and to master. So try to do something like a hobby. And so my encouraging words to you today, distract yourself from some of the inevitable things that are there. And anyway, if things are there that you can't change, why keep letting them drag you down? Live in the present moment, enjoy it, and have a lot of fun. All right, well, that's enough of coffee time today. And I'm going to go back inside and get warm and get out of here. Uh, but do watch for my videos. Subscribe below. Click on the bell. And then the next video, again, I'm going to show you uh, wrapping one of my hives, putting a winter bee kind on it, and let's uh, see how that goes. Maybe you can learn some tips from that. Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Take care.